So I'm out in the garden and I want to talk about the only way I'm growing squash from now on. I tried it for the first time this year and there's no going back for me. This is it. This is my squash growing glory. And I want to share it with you guys. If you're new around here, then hi, I'm Kiri. I'm a micro homesteader in zone 5B in Pickering, Ontario. And I like to grow food. On this channel, we talk about all things micro homesteading from growing outside in the garden, as well as growing inside hydroponically and finding ways to become more self-sufficient and reduce your reliance on the grocery store. So if that's your thing, or if you want that to be your thing, then go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell and all that stuff below so that you won't miss out on any videos in the future and you can become a micro homesteading badass. Today I want to talk about my new way to grow squash. It's not like I came up with it. I'm not claiming to have had that brainwave but I have tried it and I won't go back to any other way of growing squash. Well specific type of squash. It's not like a silver bullet for everything but on the whole it works really really well. This is my first year growing these red curry squash and I'm kind of obsessed with them. So what is this wonderful and magical way to grow squash? It's vertically. I have these gorgeous trellises. Got two of them, one above, one back there. I will put a link up above to the video of us building these. And I decided once we had these beautiful trellises to grow some squash up them. In terms of my squash growing ventures, I'm only doing it vertical. So I have the red curry squash on here. Also on the back trellis, I have some melons. Um, they're not doing great, but that's for other reasons. And then over yonder, I have more of the traditional way to grow squash. And I'll show you what's going on over there. And then we'll come back here and I'll show you what's not going on here, which is why I love this. Okay, so first we're gonna have to get over there. So we'll go underneath here and we'll come into the squash patch. It's vast. This is actually where my old deck used to be and this was a new no dig bed that I installed this year. I will put the link up above to the video um, of building this and moving an awful lot of mushroom compost. 3,750 pounds to be exact. But it was worth it because there was gravel here before and now I have this vast expanse of food growing, which is fantastic, but not as fantastic as growing the squash vertically. One of the things that you'll notice is, well, there's a walkway. There's another walkway over there, but they're pretty much impossible to get down because the squash is literally everywhere. I've got a couple of different types in there. I did one of the red curry squash on the ground as well to act as a control and compare to the ones that are growing oh so beautifully on the trellis. I also have in here some sugar pumpkins, some acorn squash, some uh, sweet dumpling squash, some of the row seven seeds koji nut squash, the 898 squash from row seven seeds as well. And I even have uh, a moringa pumpkin over yonder. We'll go have a look at that in a second. There's some pumpkin. Oh, and I have some patty pan squash, uh, specifically the white scallop squash over there. Yeah, and uh, it's a mess. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we've also got some powdery mildew cropping up. I'm gonna do a separate video on that. But we have lots of flowers and we have lots of bees, which is great. But it's not as good as it could be. And it's definitely not as accessible as it could be. So let's talk about some of the reasons that growing this vertically probably would have been better. Right, so I'm back in my little arch trellis. So even in here, my walkway is pretty clear here, so that's great also. My lovely Sorel boots, they are my son's, but now they're my gardening boots. One of the things I love about growing the squash vertically is that they take up less space because the space they're occupying is vertical space. So it's not taking away from the space in my garden. Being a micro homesteader, space is everything. So any space I can save or make better use of, I'm going to do. So that is definitely a huge, huge plus for this method of growing squash. 
if I go down the walkway, suddenly, oh, my path is blocked. Watch those plants in the dig bed. It's kind of sprawled out and then blocked my walkways, which completely defeats the purpose of growing vertically. The other thing that I've found is that it helps with pollination, at least that's my experience this year. Because it's growing up and the flowers aren't getting blocked as much, it's much easier for the bees to kind of access the flowers, which increases pollination. It is also easier for me myself to access the flowers if I want to help the pollination along, which I always do. If you want to know how to hand pollinate your squash, I will put a link up above to another video that I did on that exact thing. On this trellis here, I had two plants of the red curry squash, and I have one, two, another one there, three, four, five. That's five squash with two plants. So I do have another red curry squash in the garden that I planted as a control because I love to do experiments. Let's go over there again and see how many of the squash we have in there. All right, so I'm over in the squash patch. That is my red curry squash. I've definitely got one. And I think that's a sweet dumpling. And I saw, oh, I also have a buttercup. And somewhere over here, there is a koji nut squash too. There's a koji nut squash. On the ground, we have one squash. On the trellis, we have five. The other thing is with being on the ground, it's more exposed to pests and they're just more out of the way on the trellis. So the other thing to mention is airflow. Up here, the leaves are hanging away from the trellis. There's just a lot more space. And if we go back over the other side where we had the powdery mildew, there's almost none right now on the trellis, which is another great thing. So there's a couple of leaves that are starting to show some signs, but compared to what is going on over here, and it came from over here. So from here, it's coming on to my, my trellis. If I'd only had the trellis, chances are I would have had a lot less chance of having powdery mildew because the air circulation is amazing. I've actually gone through here and started cutting out some of the leaves there. I've hacked out a whole bunch of them. Um, to help increase the air circulation in this patch. You couldn't see it. It was like a huge dome of leaves the other day. So I don't have to do that. I've hardly cut any leaves out on the, the arch trellis. So that's another bonus, air circulation. Now, one thing I want to mention, I said at the beginning, it's not a silver bullet. It's not going to be perfect for every type of squash. So obviously it works well for the red curry. I also had some trombancini squash on here. There's one that, can you see it? There. So I have one tromboncini squash up there as well. That was doing good. And all my adorable little cucamelons, mouse melons, Mexican sour gherkins. Those did very well on here. They're so cute. If you're wondering what they look like inside. They kind of taste like limey as it make the bitter face lemmy cucumber they're supposed to be nice pickled i'm going to try that as well so growing vertically it's not going to be ideal for something like patty pan squash that is going to grow more out of a central point i also did put in a tetra squash from row seven seeds to grow up the trellis it didn't go as planned i'll show you what happened over there so it's knowing the right squash this was the tetra squash it was planted over there it was supposed to grow up there, but it ended up growing like a zucchini and coming forward. Now I've got some squash in there, so, so that's fantastic. But because it came out, it squished all my bloody onions. So that was not ideal. That was not intended. So I wouldn't grow this one up the trellis again. I'll have to try it and see how good it is. And maybe this will make it into a pot like I do with my zucchini but it's not getting a place on the trellis next year. So anything that's gonna grow with a long trailing vine is going to be ideal to grow this way. They do pretty well on their own. They make a point of coming out every day and kind of weaving in any stragglers into the, um, into the trellis, but for the most part, they were pretty good. So it wasn't a lot of extra work, but 
honestly, I'm not growing squash on the ground anymore. I will grow them up. Even to the point, outside of zucchinis, I would probably only grow varieties that I can grow vertically. That's just me. It's just so much easier. It takes up so much less space. And I think about all that space over there in the no dig bed, I had three long rows. I could have grown so much more in that space if it hadn't been completely taken over with the squash trailing everywhere. There's always lessons to learn in the garden. Every year I learn something new. This year I definitely learned, don't grow squash on the ground. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up because YouTube loves that and it helps me reach more people. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell. So if you have any varieties you would recommend, please go ahead and leave me a comment down below. As always, until next time, don't forget to enjoy the little things and go out there and make food grow. Bye guys.